Yeah. <laughs> the Greek word for model is tupa. Tupa? Do you think I need tupa? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> so, there. <laughs> So kind of similar. I actually looked up <coughs> the Greek words um, <coughs> and then kind of did some <coughs> different ways. To, you know, we, we really don't. <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> we really don't use the word sensible today, um, but we do use the word respectable. Um, uh, we don't necessarily use the word dignified today, but we do use the word uh, pleasant, peaceable, uh, self-controlled. We use those words. Um, what does it mean to be sound, uh, well-grounded? That's I think that's another way to put that. Well-grounded faith, well-grounded love, well-grounded perseverance. Model of good deeds, of good examples. <laughs> yes, yes. You're two I'll keep going um, to pass here. Honest, honest doctrine <coughs> that corresponds with the word integrity and teaching. Honest doctrine. Mm -hmm. Honest Same integrity. integrity. Mm -hmm. That's what the word means. And then a whole or healthy speech, because sound speech, um, we don't necessarily use that word sound today. What does it mean to be sound in your speech? Well, it means whole speech or healthy speech solid. or so, solid. That's not quite a better way to say that. Why are these so important for Manna? It actually gives a reason in the text. And it's actually um, throughout the book of Titus. It's really the emphasis of the book of Titus. Um, but he does give a reason. So if people have nothing bad to say. Why would they have something bad to say? Bad to say about who? About the church. God. Or God. Yeah. Or God. <laughs> really bad about the church and then really in reference to who God is. Why would that, why would not being these play a factor in saying something bad about God? What, what, what's, unpack that. What is that? Well, I mean, we are King and of Christ. We are to uh, follow God's example. So therefore, if you identify yourselves as a Christian and you're not doing that, you are bringing shame. Yeah. Right. Yes, good, good. <coughs> Keep going with that. Keep or going. hypocrisy. Or you're, you're not doing what you're wanting them to do. <laughs> you're, not, you're not leading by example. So how can how can you expect somebody to follow you if you're not being that example that you're asking them to be? Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What does that have to do with the gospel? You're going to discredit the gospel. Okay. We're not going to want to hear it. Okay. People don't yeah. want to hear it. Basically, because... you make it of no effect. Make what of no effect? The gospel. The gospel of no effect. Because what you say and what, what they see they would say anything different. So what are you talking about all this stuff? You're just like me, so what difference does it make? Because what happens to us in the gospel? What happens to us by the gospel? In the power of the spirit, what happens to you? Change. So your heart changes. There's a change in you. So they gotta see that change in us. They gotta see that change, but the, the whole thing is there needs to, there should be a change. There should yeah. be a difference. You should live differently. We should live differently. We should act differently. And, and so, and then what I'm going to do, I'm, I'm going to raise these on this side, and then we're going to kind of look at the opposite. That's what I want to do. But first, I want to give these to you, so that way you can see this. And this is what he's calling men to act like. Oh, by the way, another question. How do men develop these character qualities? How do men develop these character qualities? Discipleship. What makes you say that? You have to, you, well, let me go back to the example thing. Mm -hmm. For a model, you have to 
you have to see these things in action. You have to have elders who you look up to and respect providing you an example, something you can attain to, showing you what it looks like. You can say peaceable and pleasant, but what is that? How does that play out? What does it look like? Yeah, what does it really, how does it really display itself to me? What I think of as fathers to sons. Well, and yes, it would be fathers to sons. Actually, in the text, it's what? Older men to younger men. Yes, in the text, it's older men to younger men. <clears throat> so really the question is, how do young men develop these character qualities? They should see these in the older men. The older men. They should be able to see these in the older men. Okay, so. So it hinges on the gospel first, with the life change, and then discipleship, especially the older men. Mm -hmm. But without... Without the example, then we have to go to the word. Anyway, the word renew our renew our mind, <coughs> put off the old man, and put on the new. And we're always doing that. We always do that. Whether whether you have the old men there or not, and if he gives us all kinds of examples <coughs> of what that looks like. We looked at we've looked at just two: Paul and Jesus. And there's true masculinity right there. So now let's go through. And let's talk about the opposite to these. And not necessarily, I'm not necessarily saying, okay, what's the opposite to this? I mean, we can't. We can do it like that. But I'm just saying, when you look at this list, what would be the opposite to these things? What would uh, some come to your mind? And I'm just going to write those, these down, and then, and then we'll kind of sum it up, the ones that I got listed down. But I just want to get some uh, feedback. Somebody that's rude or straightforward. Good. Rude. Obnoxious. Angry. Anger. Negative. Pugnacious. <laughs> Good stuff. <laughs> no, no, no. But you had that one. I know that. <laughs> Do you learn a new word name? <laughs> no, I just, that's an old word. That's an old word. What else? Define uh, that, that word. What's that? Define that word, buddy. Define that <laughs> word. Pugnacious. Define that word. Rude. Uh, that means uh, <laughs> everything above it. Combative. You know, okay. a fighter. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. Look at a certain place. I'm the right combatant. <laughs> a pugilist is a fighter. Huh. Mm. Oh, man. Why are you starting to remember this? I live with this. Mm -hmm. I read a little. So, Susanna, you're being pugnacious today. <laughs> <laughs> Fly out of here. Number five says model of good deeds would be a model of bad deeds. Bad example. Bad example. Dishonest. Perverse doctrine. Perverse doctrine. A perverse period. <laughs> what did you say? Trash perverted period. Yeah. The other thing you could say is just naive. Mm. What did you put there? Naive. Oh, naive. They're ignorant. Proud. And they choose to be that way. Yeah. Proud. Pride. Pride. Yeah. That is the main one, right? Dirty mouth. Hot enough. <laughs> I'm just asking. Arrogant. What is Pride? Yeah, there's a guy in so. 
where Anne is, like tried to share the gospel with. He loves his arrogance. He can admit to. Well, most people. Are <coughs> Anything else? Oh, I'm sure there is. But there's, there's, there's more. Yeah. I mean, there's other ways to put things. So. Yeah. Uh, okay, so now I'm going to give you the right answer. Seven. Uh, is, is that, what did you say? The right answer? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> what I did was, I put everything in like a good, uh, this is according to the curriculum, how they put things. Yeah. Um, macho. Oh, Muy yeah. macho. Macho. Like, That's like Jim. It's <laughs> got Proverbs 16, 18. And then someone else read 21, 24, please. <coughs> James 4, 6, but he gives a greater grace. Therefore, it says God is opposed to the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Someone who's a macho, they're reckless, rebellious, in your face. Now, there's a reason why, I mean, we're talking about masculinity, and, and then they use that word macho because within the, uh, within the world, that's very much how guys... You know, they want to act like that, like real macho, right? They're kind of reckless in your face, like, oh yeah, you looking at me? We look at me for like that. Like right? Studly. Yeah. Studly. Yeah, right. Exactly. Studly. There's that macho. Yeah. That's what that's what it means to be a man. Well, no, that's not what it means to be a man. That's that's the opposite of being a man. But that's how the world thinks that's what it means to be a man. Well, and I think we can't mix that up with strength, because men have need to have strength. Right. But not in the form of a They're macho studly. Right. Like they're strong. I mean, that. Um, yeah. Yes, but the strength under control, right? Mm -hmm. But but it is, it's it's not showing off that strength. Mm -hmm. That's the macho type mentality. There's a second one. Um, domineering. Abrasive or harsh. Or controlling. Something like that. Yeah, or controlling. There's a verse there for you, Ephesians 4 32. <clears throat> Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ forgave you. So there's there's what it means to be a man. That, that, that's masculinity, where what the world proclaims to be masculine is being dominant and, and uh, abrasive. Um, boss others around. Intimidating. Uh, you, you cut off People who disagree with you, disagreeers, cut them off. Um, maybe he goes on that, that um, his uh, name call, cutting someone down. That's a way to show your dominance over someone. Not to get into political things, but that's what we're seeing today in our government. 
Yeah, I mean, yeah, there's, there's, I was actually thinking about that, you know, with amongst the senators and the, and the, the House of Representatives, that they will uh, sit there and, and knock each other down, which, that's a form of domineering, being abrasive. What's he say? The confidence kind of comes to mind. Mm -hmm. yeah. Any thoughts, comments, questions so far that we've gone through? Whether we're talking about this or this so far, or even this. this looks like that's right. Seeing a lot more of this and a lot less of that. Well, it's kind of interesting to see how society of the world will take something to be a good thing and turn it into a bad thing. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you know, all, all of that, the dim, domineering racism, this macho, I mean, the, the, the strength, the, you know, the being the leadership, they'll take that, but then they'll just, you know, you see how it's corrupted. And, and hopefully that's a great point, Michael, because you see how it's easily distorted. Sin easily distorts things. <laughs> that's how the evil one has done it for centuries. He will take what's true and he'll distort it. Strength and leadership. You have to lead. <clears throat> I mean, you know, throw this out there too. Uh, you have to lead as men and yet also keep in mind is for some people you're leading but for other people you might be being domineering. Mm -hmm. it, it can be subjective. There is a fine line between leading and domineering, and sometimes it gets blurred. It's hard. Um, it's hard when you're in leadership to know uh, what time, when are you leading and when are you being domineering? When are you not leading and when, I don't know if that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. it's, it's hard, that's difficult, so. Well, I think it depends on how many of these other aspects you have in your life versus having those aspects go along with it. So if you're domineering and you have this macho type attitude, then you're on the wrong side of domineering. But if you have this peaceful, respectable, self-control, that type of mentality, then you can see that, that where that domineering can be on the right side of that line. That's true. Yeah. So you look at your, your whole life holistically. Actually, it brings up a great question. How do you know where the line is? What helps you? What has God put in the scriptures? And specifically what we've looked at in Titus chapter 2. What has he given to help us to be able to distinguish between that line? Where, like where you've been. When, how will you know if you're being domineering or you're really showing a model of good deeds and you're really showing true leadership? How do you know that? The older man. Yes, so there's the aspect of discipleship and accountability. That's what's going to help you. When you see an older man or you see another person who's saying, hey, you know what, yeah, here you're being domineering. Or, or you know what, no, I don't think you're being, you're, you're leading. That helps, that helps you. So you're not looking at yourself through your own eyes. It helps have another set of eyes. So. Also in the examples that we've talked about is in Paul and Jesus. Yes, so you have to look at the scriptures with that. That's good. And it's got to be done in love. That's the underlying thing. Right. Real love, God's love. Not fleshly love. Right, right. Is it okay? <laughs> Here's the third one. That's so. <laughs> Crude. Rude. Oh. <laughs> Obnoxious. Oh, a red sock. That came up. It should be in Ephesians, right? Ephesians 4.32. Can somebody read verse 29? And then someone else read verses 3 and 4. Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for building up as fits the occasion, that it may give grace to those who hear. But sexual immorality and all impurity 
for covetousness must not even be named among you as is proper among saints. Let there be no filthiness, nor foolish talk, nor crude joking, which are out of place, but instead let there be thanksgiving. That's what comes in in these words here, here. Uh, using profanity, coarse speech, dirty words, those types of things. Give us off on me. And yet that's again the mentality in the world is and that's that's how guys talk. They talk like that. The amazing part is you hear females talk. That's the point. Right? <coughs> see some some guy using an f bomb. Okay, but I'm I'm still shocked over the amount of times that a female uses that word. I'm like, wow, that's that's not. It still does a number on me. And then you hear kids talking that way too. Yeah, the kids kids talk that way. Teenagers. Little kids, what do you mean? They learn from their parents. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They don't even know what they're saying, you know? Fourth one. Uh, out of control. <coughs> Fourteen seventeen. Okay. Quick tempered man acts foolish, and the man of evil devices is hated. Mm -hmm. Then verse twenty nine. Remember to slow the anger and have great understanding, but he who has hasty temper exalts the fault. In Ephesians four thirty one. <clears throat> Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you, along with all malice. You can even put in verse 26 of Ephesians, Be angry and do not sin. Don't let the sun go down your anger and do not give the devil an opportunity. Um, out of control, I mean, versus being self controlled. Um, it's not wrong to be angry. Be, being angry is not necessarily sin. You understand that, right? Right. It's, it's where it goes, it's where it's directed to most of the time. We either direct it at God or at people. So when, when we get angry, angry is, anger is a, is a good emotion. It's an emotion that's given to us by God. It's God gets angry. Um, the Lord God is angry with the wicked every day. So anger is a strong emotion. The, the point is being able to take that and have control and be able to direct it towards the problem. So out of control, out of control anger. So your kid's your problem. How do you direct the anger? So what? Your kid is one of your one of your kids is your problem. How do you direct your anger? Um, <laughs> strength, yeah. You don't do that in anger. Uh, no. You have to have self control no, before I, you do it. I understand. You know? See, and that's notice what you just said. Don't do it in anger. You have to have self control. True, but be, remember, you're angry at what's going on because of the sin that you see, and the way to release that anger is when you spank them. Because you're able to be relieved of the fact that what the kid is doing is sinful and wrong. You're able to direct it right towards that. The problem that's happening, the, the, the thing that's taking place is the sin. That isn't what it says in the books you've read. Um, mm. 
Well, I would beg to disagree with you on that. And I understand what, what's being meant, is you don't spank them in out-of-control right. anger. Yeah. Right. That's what you don't spank them in, when you're, when you're out of control. That's what you don't do. But that's what they meant, not if you're self-controlled and you're still angry. So you see what I mean? That's, that's very, I learned that from the biblical counseling training. It never dawned on me until I looked at the text in Ephesians 4. And I, oh yeah, that makes sense. Being angry is not necessarily sin, it's what do you do with that? When you start directing it towards that person, I'm gonna unleash it upon you, then that's when you're sinning, right? Mm -hmm. Because then you become uh, out of control. Out of control of anger makes me think of an alcoholic. You know, yes. when it's someone, an abusive alcoholic. That's what makes me think. Well, let's call it what it is. An, um, um, a domineering drunk. Amen. Uh, drunkenness. Um, we'll use the biblical term, but I understand exactly what you mean, Todd. Um, an abrasive, harsh, drunk who's out of control. Yes? So it's more than one sin. First of mm -hmm. all, being drunk, and second of all, being mm -hmm. out of control. Yes. That's good. Threw a little wrench in there, huh? Number five. <laughs> People pleaser. A people pleaser. Uh, Ephesians six five through six, and then Second Corinthians five nine. Slaves obey your earthly masters with fear and trembling, but with a sincere heart as you would Christ, not by the way of eye service as people pleasers, but as servants of Christ doing the will of God from the heart. Not men pleasers, but God pleasers. Hmm. Therefore we also have as our ambition, whether at home or absent, to be pleasing to him. Yep. This is my ambition to please him, not to be a people pleaser. Um, doesn't want to take charge. Um, stays quiet. Doesn't want to rock the boat. And there's kind of like the opposite to this. Here he's domineering and, and abrasive. Here he's Wimpening. weak. And, and really, this. Let me see, do I have it? Oh, that goes to something else. Yeah, there's, there's weaknesses there. Mm -hmm. Very fine line. It, it, it is. It's tough. It's hard. It's <coughs> for other people coming to help. That's why you need the body of Christ. Amen. It never was meant for Christians to be mavericks. If somebody tells you otherwise, they're very much in error in the Bible. Any other thoughts or questions on this? Number six. Simple or naive. But the sensible man, know what it says? Mm -hmm. Nice. In the English uses that same word, sensible man, considers his steps. Notice, simple versus being sensible. In other words, being sensible is self control sober minded. Yeah. Psalm 19, verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. 
testimony of the Lord is pure or sure, making wise the simple. Makes the simple wise. Know the word. That's where we come in with this. Well grounded in their faith. Honest doctrine. You should know the truth. Men should know the truth. And the only way they're going to know the truth is if they are in the word. In the truth. So men should be with God's people. Men should be studying God's word. They should be studying God's word together. They should be uh, not in the middle of the service or in the middle of this or in the middle of that. They should be engaging, intense, note-taking, engaged in what's going on because they should be honest, strong in their doctrine and in the faith. For all you men here, you should be the example of that. Not simply not lazy, complacent. That's where kind of these go in together, in the sense of not taking charge. It's kind of like, oh, whatever. They kind of mix together. Okay, so last one. Lives a life of evil. Proverbs 14, 16. Two Corinthians seven one. One Timothy four. Proverbs 14, 16. A wise man is cautious and turns away from evil, but a fool is arrogant and careless. Since we have these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from every defilement of body and spirit, bringing holiness to completion and the fear of God. Mm. <clears throat> bringing holiness to completion. Fearing God. And then 1 Timothy 4, 7 through 8. Have nothing to do with silliness. Rather, train yourself for godliness. For while bodily training is of some value, godliness is of value in every way, as it holds promise for the present life and also for the life. <coughs> so, is it this opposite to uh, model? Good deeds. Being, being well grounded in love. Um, the life is known to display wickedness, ungodliness. Um, just kind of go hand in hand. There's people pleaser, <clears throat> lazy, doesn't matter. So here, here you kind of have, this is what our text says, this is what men should be like, and this is kind of, these are the opposite to those things. <clears throat> this is what, how the world describes masculinity, <clears throat> and this is how the scriptures describes masculinity. So real men act like. <clears throat> I think in the worldly sense though, you don't see a man that's dominant, abrasive, macho, and then simple and naive. You know, there's they're they're they take one and go all out with that. You know what I mean? So maybe a few of them, like so dominant, abrasive, maybe out of control. But in scripture, we're asked to be all of these things, mm -hmm. and so that's where I think we need help, you know, from each other, and we need each other for to be more uh, focused on. The entire list, instead of being one thing, as as we are not in the world. You know, I understand what you mean. There might be like, um, it's almost like um, these kind of might go together, or yeah. these three, and these three kind of go together. Maybe this comes in with that. Yeah. You know, I understand what you mean. You know what's scary? 
we're talking about these as problems and, and the way the world takes these things. There are two there that have crept into the church big time. Which one are you speaking about? Five and six. Absolutely. Five and six? Yeah. And, and what makes you say that? And what, what, what is? Well, not here, thank God. Uh, it say it said not here, thank God. But in many churches, and you know, on a whole, I mean, several examples, the people pleasers and the simple and naive minds. Those are the ones you have. Um, in many churches. Mm -hmm. Number one, two. Number also. one, two. What number two? I can see. Really number well, one well, is two. Because you have these kind of uh, arrogant leaders that take control of everything. Oh, on an individual basis, but I mean, I'm yeah. talking about in a in a broad, unfortunately, a broad. Uh, in a corporate way, is that what you're thinking? Yes. Within the local. Well, church. You, well within well many churches, and in you know churchianity uh, as a whole, the the people pleasing and the simple naive mind. They've thrown out scripture, and they the, the two go together. They, you know, we don't talk about sin, we don't talk about hell, we don't want to convict anybody, we want to make anybody feel bad. It's all about, you know, making you feel good about yourself and, and you know, self-help stuff. And, and that comes from a lack of scripture. You, you, you back off on scripture and all this other stuff comes. So the simple, naive mind and the people who can go together. And it's a big problem within the church as a whole. Mm -hmm. I think number one, too, arrogant. Me too. It's, it's really. But it just that kind of jumped out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any other comments or questions on me? I got a few more minutes. No, it's almost after four. Now you know. <laughs> <laughs> we were really going on. We got to preach, man. We got to preach. It's after four. Go to, uh, I don't know where you're in your Bibles, but go back to Titus if you would. <clears throat> this is neat how, how Paul does this. He's talking about older men in chapter 2, there, right? Older men teaching the younger men, the older women teaching the younger women. He talks about God's grace that appeared to all men, calling us to be zealous for good deeds. And then go to chapter 3, starting in verse 1. Notice what he says. Remind them to be subject to rulers, to authorities, to be obedient, ready for every good deed. To hate no one, to be uncontentious, gentle, showing every consideration for all men. For we also once were foolish ourselves, mm -hmm. disobedient, deceived, enslaved to various lusts and pleasures, <clears throat> spending our life in malice and envy, hateful, hating one another. So what did he just describe? Who did we used to be like? Those young guys. Like this? <laughs> This is what we used to be like. This, this is how our lives should be displayed. In some way, shape, or form, and then branching out in different areas of our lives. This is how we used to live. But then notice what he says in verse 4. But when the kindness of God our Savior, his love for mankind appeared, he saved us. Not on the basis of deeds which we've done in righteousness, but according to his mercy. By the washing of regeneration, and renewing by the Holy Spirit, yeah. whom he poured out upon us richly through Jesus Christ, our Savior, that being justified by his grace, we might be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Amen. So what does he take us back to? Gospel. The gospel. Yes, the gospel. the gospel. So here, and this is a great place for us to end, the gospel The thing that's going to bring, it's going to, it's like that, well, I think it's like a filter out this evil. It'll change us, and then this will come out in the way we live. That's 
we, that's why he mentioned even the renewing and regeneration of the Holy Spirit poured out upon us richly so we can live different lives. This is what masculinity is and what it is not. And this just kind of sums up what we looked at for the past three weeks. We looked at Paul, we looked at Jesus, and today, we'll finish that up today. And Michael Matthews is going to take that next week and be looking at women, examples women. from women, right? Mm -hmm. So we're going to move now into women and talk about women and different examples from women. I'm assuming they're going to kind of go through the same flow, look at different examples, and then, and then character qualities as well. So, um, so Michael's up for next week. I think it's the, the book of Ruth, right? We're going to talk about Ruth. So, oh, that would be good. Yeah. Last comments, questions on this? Good job.